Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Daniela, and typically on this channel we do crafting with a cocktail, which means I craft and do cocktails. It is 8 a.m., so I'm just having coffee with creamer. Forgive me, I know last video I didn't have a cocktail either, but we will have some awesome ones coming up, so don't worry about that. Today is super exciting because it's part of the Save Our Earth Coolab hosted by Purple Pixie Creations. I will definitely have her info down below and co-hosted by myself this month. So let's check out what we made. We are kicking it off strong with this gorgeous Moroccan inspired tin can lantern. So these are all different types of lanterns that were a trash to treasure kind of concept, which is the point of the Save Our Earth Coolab. Save our earth, recycle, all that great stuff, reuse your trash. So I'm starting out here by just marking a very, very basic design with a Sharpie onto my can. This just had sliced beets in it. Um, something I did discover is that it was a bit difficult with the ridges. So if you have a can that's just plain without ridges, that might work a little easier. And I tell you that because before using this drill, I was using a nail and hammer and it did not work at all. I'm also pretty weak in the hands, but regardless, even this drill part was really, really difficult for me. I literally had to Google how to remove and replace a drill bit because my boyfriend's not home and um, I only ever use this when he tells me how to use it. So <laughs> anyways... I'm just going around and poking holes or drilling holes into the circular shapes that I made, except for the dot in the middle. You'll see that that's where I'm going to place a gem in the center of this piece later on, but I'm just using a really small drill bit and drilling holes all the way around that circle. Like I said, if you can see my drill kind of sliding there, it was really difficult with these ridges. It's much easier on the flat areas when I get to that point, but... Um, do your best and just go around and do all of those areas. I ended up not filming the whole thing because it really was like difficult for me to focus and try to film when I was just trying to get these dang holes into my can, okay? So just do your best and if you need help, obviously ask for it. I cleaned up all my little shards and dust with my handy dandy ladybug vacuum that I will have linked for you in my description down below in case you're interested. This is literally so great for picking up glitter, dust, obviously these little aluminum can shavings and more. Then I'm just gonna show you here, I'm gonna use some Rust-Oleum black spray paint to coat this and I'm gonna let it dry for several hours. Here comes the fun part is the color. So I thought that the color would really pop against the black. You could obviously spray paint this actually any color you wanted. I just chose black because I knew that these bright colors would pop. And I went with this kind of Moroccan theme of like really bright colors and these gems. I'm really excited about how this turned out. I am adhering them with some Gorilla Glue, some Gorilla Super Glue, and a little toothpick when I can. My fingers are literally coated in super glue. <laughs> so be careful. If you have better luck with it not exploding, uh, go for that. But I got this sticker pack at Dollar Tree and I absolutely love the variety of colors in it. So I'm just using that to adhere onto here. Now they do have a sticky back already, but I chose to still super glue them because I want them to be able to stay. At the very, very end, I add a few gems on the sides, on the very outer sides, and I got a little lazy and stopped gluing them because I'm covered in glue. And I was like, you know what, I'm over. If these ones fall off, I'll glue them on later. But if you want a permanent hold, definitely make sure that you um, use some super glue as well um, as the adhesive backing. I'm also not sure with how it would deal with the heat with just the adhesive backing as well. So um, just do what you feel is going to look best. Now I end up using a little votive candle inside and it looks gorgeous glowing as you can see here. I think you could also use a little battery operated one, especially with a real flame. This tin can's gonna get really hot, so if you have kids, I would definitely go for the flameless option and just get one of those little LED tea lights. But anyways, this is how she turned out. I'm obsessed. It turned out honestly better than I expected. So let's talk about the Save Our Earth Cool Lab. Again, it's like a trash to treasure you could also do thrift flips. It's hosted by Crystal from the Purple Pixie, who is a newer YouTuber. So go support her and here are some of the rules. This is a monthly challenge, so definitely message her on Instagram if you're interested in joining. 
Moving on to this fun colorful lantern. This I absolutely love and I kind of like the streakiness of it because you can tell it's handmade. I am using a mixture of just plain Elmer's glue and a little bit of acrylic paint. Now I have done the stained glass kind of technique before and I just use the Elmer's glue but I think you could use Mod Podge as well. I just didn't for this occasion because I knew that Elmer's glue worked for me. So I just mixed it in with a little bit of whatever color I wanted and I'm going in with that. I will tell you the longest part of this process, including drying, was just trying to get the stupid label off this jar, okay? If you have tips for how to get it off, please let me know down below. I tried using soap and water, hot water, boiling water, baking soda, uh, acetone. I mean, it really gave me a hard time. So please leave your tips down below. So like I said, I just picked out colors I like, mixed them with some Elmer's glue, and I'm just repeating this pattern. So I've got a thick fuchsia line, a thick pastel pink line, and then two thinner lines. One is turquoise and one is yellow. These are all um, plaid paints except for the fuchsia one. If you didn't know, I'm a plaid ambassador, so I'm really excited to share with you all the wonderful things your products can do. So I just go around with my brush and um, repeat this process. I will say that off camera, I did um, do a second coat on the ones that needed it. Not all of them, but the ones that needed it. And originally my thought was I was gonna use puffy paint to make black lines in between, between each color to make it even more stained glass-like, but I actually really ended up loving the colors next to each other and didn't wanna break them up with the black because I thought it would just be a little over the top. But that is totally an option if you're interested in doing that. So this is after the second coat. I'm just trying to speed up the process slightly by using my heat gun and I'm not getting too close to the jar. It looks close from the angle I'm at, but this really did help speed that up. So I'm gonna have that link down below as well if you're interested in getting a heat gun, which is great at um, helping things dry. It can also do different types of effects. It helps remove some labels. It didn't, I didn't try, I will say I didn't try that technique for my jar, okay? But <laughs> I know some people use it to get labels off of like Dollar Tree signs and stuff like that. Now I'm going in with some ginormous nautical rope from the Dollar Tree um, and I'm just hot gluing as well as super gluing it to the top. Um, I want this again to be a more permanent hold so I'm going around and then when I realized uh, there's like this awkward gap in between the um, nautical rope and the jar and you can see the rough edges of my paint I decided to go in with a second rope or twine this is like a thick jute cord and this one I ended up just hot gluing down like guys I was over it by this point <laughs> I've been all morning just trying to move that dang label so I'm just hot gluing this down and this actually really added a nice extra touch to it and I absolutely love how it turned out. This is what it looks like when it's glowing in the bathroom. Again, I kind of like the painterly streakiness of it but that's just my vibe. If you're a perfectionist, maybe this project isn't for you but I really love how it turned out. Let me know what you guys think down below and what colors you might use if you wanted to recreate this project as well. Just popping in one last time to say if you're new here I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow and get noticed by YouTube and we are working hard to get monetized so um, please if you're interested in my channel support me in that way. I love to hear what you have to say and make sure you check out everyone else on the playlist that I'll have linked down below as well. Let's move on to our last DIY. Now this one is an oldie but a goodie that I had made for a winter wonderland themed uh, video that I did with Megan the Crafty Quinn during this past winter. But I thought I'd include it because it's still an awesome lantern DIY and a trash to treasure. So I'm using an old wine bottle. This one happens to be a blue one. And I went for, again, a winter wonderland theme. So this one I thought is great too for some of you who don't have a Cricut or something that can make stencils. I am using these little... Um, stencils that I got from Amazon that I can leave linked down below as well. These are actually for like face painting um, and so I'm just kind of sticking on all the snowflake ones and then I'm just going to take a little sponge and some white acrylic paint and I'm just going to dab it on there. Now it's really important to dab it and not swipe it because if you swipe it all of that paint's just going to run right under your stencil and make it really blobby and you don't want that. I only picked out three different snowflake stencils, so I just lightly peel them up after dabbing them with the paint and then move them to the next location until I'm happy with where I have all of my placements of my snowflakes.
Now, if you get any sort of paint outside of the stencil, super quick, easy fix. You can just use a little wet paper towel, a wet Q-tip, whatever. If it's dry, you can just dab it in a little bit of um, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and it'll totally come off. Now, I'm using some Tulip Glitter Fabric Paint. I like this because it's like a puffy paint, um, and it's just going to dry complete glitter. It looks foggy as I'm doing my designs here, but it will dry with just glitter. And I'm just making some kind of swirls and polka dots to go with this kind of like wintry flurry theme. But you could do this with any bottle with any design for any season. Again, this is just an old one from a Winter Wonderland uh, video, but you could seriously be as creative as you want with this. I have made actually several of these now with different designs, with some clay added, with um, like actual painted pictures on them. So get as creative as you'd like with this. Now I'm using these little cork lights that I bought also off Amazon. Again, we'll link, be linked down below. Sorry guys, I didn't realize I was gonna have so many Amazon products on here. <laughs> um, but these are really nice because you can just kind of uh, put the little twinkly lights in there and then it just sits in there like a cork and all you have to do is turn on the off and on switch that's on the little plastic cork piece itself. These are super fun and convenient. And again, this makes great decor. It makes great gifts. And you could do it for any uh, wine bottle, any season, or anything with a small mouth bottle like this one. It felt a little plain, so I did end up adding a little teeny tiny twine bow at the top, which I think added a really nice finishing touch to our bottle. So like I said, once that puffy paint completely dries, it won't be foggy like that. It will just turn to like plain glitter um, and it looks so much prettier but here is just a little preview of what it looks like in the dark super gorgeous we turn these on when we're watching movies or whatever um, just honestly so much fun i hope you guys enjoyed this trash to treasure lit diy lantern video and i'll see you next time bye